Rahim. This is part three of a talk on current economic crisis in Pakistan and solutions. In the previous parts, links to the previous parts are given here. In this part, we will discuss how colonization of minds prevents us from seeing the solutions and what we can do about it. A brief summary of the previous parts is as follows. Our problem is very simple. We import more than we export, uh, forcing us to borrow dollars. And when we borrow, the lenders enforce their economic policies upon us. And the solution is simple. Stop importing more, become self-sufficient in uh, producing what we need and produce for our public, not for foreign demand, uh, catered to domestic demand rather than that of the foreigners. But this solution is never under discussion by our economists and policymakers. Why, when this is the only solution? The reason we fail to understand our problems is because a university education teaches us economics in isolation from politics and history, and this makes us blind to the realities of the world around us. And um, it sets up phantom enemies, and we spend our times and efforts and energy uh, pursuing wrong solutions. So if you want to understand the real problem and the real solutions, we must study the history of the origins of our current crisis. Brief sketch of relevant history is that we were colonized for 100 years, and colonization is a mechanism for extraction of resources. And uh, huge amounts of wealth and surplus was extracted from India and sent overseas to England. Uh, Stavrianos has written a history book called Global Rift, which explains how the rich countries today are rich because they stole from the poor, and the poor are now poor because of the same uh, theft of resources. The colonial institutions in India were set up to extract resources, not to develop, not to create economic growth. And uh, the British were too few in number to manage such a large country, so they created a class of followers who was trained to love them and respect them and admire them and have contempt and hatred for their own people. This was the only way that they would be able to participate with the British in robbing their own country. The two world wars sapped the power of the Europeans and uh, led to freedom of colonies around the world. Uh, in 1944, at the end of World War II, the leadership of the globe was transferred to the USA. Uh, it is described, if you look at history, then uh, you understand that at the end of the World War II, the European, the Western leaders drew up plans to ensure that even though the colonies were independent in name, they would never be able to pursue independent economic policies. They would keep fighting each other and the European advisors would provide them with advice which would allow them access to the resources, the oil and the other resources that they needed from uh, the former colonies. Because the U.S. itself had been a former colony, it had, it had gained independence by revolting against their masters, it did not suit them to set up colonies in the style of Britain and the European powers. So they devised a different plan. And uh, this uh, one of the um, keys to the development of this plans was Operation Ajax, in which the popular dem democratically elected government of Mossadegh was replaced by the U.S. puppet Raza Shah Pahlavi, and this was done for the control of the Iranian oil. And the great success of this operation led to the uh, development of this concept of regime change. Instead of uh, actually going in and planting your armies and doing directly ruling the, uh, the former colonies, the U.S. was uh, going to create regimes which were favorable to U.S. and they would follow U.S. interests. And this was indirect colonization. If you want to understand the economic policies being pursued in the third world, which is the former colonies, we cannot understand it without understanding this historical background. 
A second very important aspect to understand which is not well understood is that colonization doesn't work by physical force. It works by mind control. Mind control is done via education. The educational process teaches us to love and admire and respect the West and have contempt and hatred for our own people and our own heritage and our own leaders and our own intellectuals. The goal of uh, Western education explicitly uh, spelled out by Macaulay was to create a class which will admire and respect the West. And this was necessary in order for them to assist the Europeans in exploiting their own country. And this educational process continues in exactly the same way to this day. It helps support the power of the coconut class, the class which is allied with West in terms of having the same ideals and visions and goals, but uh, it is, uh, goes against the interests of the masses. Uh, to understand the colonization of Moyles, we can look at some examples. One of them is Salman Rushdie, who wrote three different books, one expressing his shame for his family, one for his um, hatred for his own culture, his people and his nation, and one book which expressed his hatred for his own religion. So this kind of feeling of inferiority that we are nothing and the uh, white people are everything, they are advanced, we are underdeveloped, they are civilized, we are barbarians, etc. This is uh, necessary in order to enslave us, in order to make us follow the policies in favor of the uh, colonizers rather than following policies which are favorable to us. In this complex, the create in, uh, the, the, in this uh, education which teaches us to love the West, one of the critical tools is a false history. And we have been fed this false history through our educational process. And it is necessary to debunk that history and replace it with a history which shows the West for what it is rather than a false picture which glorifies them and makes everyone else appear as if uh, they have been, uh, they have nothing. Another extreme illustration of this colonized mentality is uh, an audio clip by Hassan Nisar in which he uh, expresses the idea that we are the worst nation on the planet, our culture is rotten to the core and we are a thousand times worse than all other nations and we ca what we what we do cannot even be imagined by the civilized nations of the world. And then he lists a long list of crimes that we do. Uh, actually, if we just take a list of crimes that are done in the West, they would be far greater than this. So if we just start listing A, B, C, D, what, uh, what uh, happened and what happened. But the point is that these crimes don't make us. There are people in our country who do bad things, but that doesn't mean that we as a nation are uh, bad. Uh, some of the special points here are that he says that there is no concept of lying or dishonesty in the West, which is simply false. And he says that they would not, the West in the West, they would not conceive of the possibility of mixing milk with water or of providing fake medicines. In fact, there is a huge food in industry which has been uh, poisoning the people and causing huge amounts of harm to the people. Similarly, there's a huge pharmaceutical industry which has caused an op opioid crisis, killing lots of people for profits. So it's just ignorance of what happens in the West, which leads uh, Hassan Nassar to think that the West is angels and we are all devils. Uh, this is the inferiority complex, which is at the heart of um, the colonized mentality. Now, the point of mentioning this is that whenever I have uh, shown this clip and uh, to audiences, they have all reacted in more or less the same way that Hassan Nassar is telling the truth. Yes, we are like that. We are very bad. We are rotten. We do all sorts of bad things and they are very advanced and they are very civilized and we are barbarians. So this colonized mentality is very much with us. And if we want to make change and progress, we have to get rid of this and we have to, um, we have to understand that all people are children of Adam and Hawa alayhi salam and we are all very similar. There are good and bad people here and there are good and bad people everywhere. So to summarize this third part of the talk, a uh, hundred years of colonization inflicts deep trauma on our minds. We are 
used to thinking of ourselves as inferior and underdeveloped and uncivilized and thinking of the colonizers as advanced and developed and civilized. And a critical tool for this colonization of minds is Western education. And within this Western education, economic theory is very important uh, aspect of the brainwashing that is done to us. And uh, to counteract these, we need to develop an alternative to Western education. Uh, for this purpose, I have given a link here. And also, we have to develop our own theory of economics. And for this also, there is a link provided here. So this is the end of the third part of the talk.